our next guest, uh, basically tells the story of a second-hand camera. And a little bit of talent as well. Let's, let's, uh, meet him. Neil McIntosh, um, from Stafford. Neil, good morning. Good morning to you. Um, you took up a photography, or you picked up a camera, just a few years ago, really. That's correct. What happened was I was living um, in San Sebastian in the Basque Country in the northern part of Spain and had to come back here about three, three and a half years ago for personal reasons and living back at home with my parents found that I was at a, a loose end one day and decided to see if I could borrow my mum's camera at the time. Um, took it off, went down for a walk down by the local canal and started snapping away at anything I could find and saw that one or two of the shots came out reasonably well and showed them to my father who's actually a very very good photographer in his own right and um, he sort of pointed me in certain directions for for what to to focus on in shots etc etc from there I start I actually went out and uh, bought myself a, a camera last year and started taking it a little bit more seriously, going up onto Canuck Chase and shooting the deer, then down by the canal taking insects, birds, basically any sort of um, wildlife that I could, I could, I could spot, shall we say? Yeah. And it developed from there. Why wildlife then, rather than portraits or? you know, wedding photography, what was it about that? Um, I've always liked wildlife, always have been into wildlife. I think it's, it comes back from a, from a childhood spent around um, at, around the countryside, certainly with my parents. When, we'd, when I was younger, we lived in uh, South Africa and Nigeria, so I had a little taste of it out there as well. Um, I, I think it's, it's the stupid things, but like programmes with people like David Attenborough and um, I can't think of the gentleman who was the, the, the guy who had the, the, the big beard. Um, I can't remember. David Bellamy. David Bellamy, that's him yeah. as well, yeah. Childhood programs like that, they've always always rung a very strong bell with me and stayed with me, and I've developed my love of nature from that. And the other reason being is I don't have patience to be able to sit and tell somebody how to stand <laughs> or how to pose. I, I can't do that. <laughs> Cause, but I guess, well, you say you don't have patience, but surely if you're taking, I mean, obviously nature in its just its widest form is fine but if you're wanting something regarding an insect or an animal mm -hmm. you have got to have some patience haven't you it's a little bit different because you're waiting for them to interact with you rather than you having to interact with them and that's a big big difference because to try and get somebody to stand in the right position in the right light with a nice smile on their face it would drive me crazy to be perfectly honest I'm quite happy to sit there and wait for three or four hours for some little wren to appear and say hello I'm here take a shot and then go <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to family gatherings you're not the one that's like everybody sit together I'll, uh, I'll take a picture I think you're more likely to find me somewhere at the back of the room trying to keep well out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And the camera that you use, mm -hmm. is it kind of top of the line, massive telephoto lens, is it, you know, what, oh, what are you using? Good God, no, it's, um, it's, it's a good, it's a good brand, it's a good model, I, well, for me, it personally, it is anyway, it's, uh, it's a Fujifilm camera, it's, uh, the difference between this one and the ones that I was using before was the previous ones had uh, an automatic zoom on them, which tended, tended to burn the battery a lot, and you couldn't get, um, the focus that you, you wanted 100% of the time, whereas this is a manual zoom, like the old, um, SLR cameras. Mm. But you've got the digital side of it as well, so you've got the best of both worlds. And it's by no means a top-of-the-range camera. I mean, it literally did cost me £100 from a second-hand shop. Really? Yeah, honestly. I mean, I, I had bought a new one before that, but even then, with I, I work for um, one of the large superstores here in Stafford, and with my discounts from the stores, I'd, I, got a, I got it for a very good price. It was under 100 quid for a brand-new camera, but I just couldn't get on with it, so I, I traded it in. So it was literally 100 for 100 my goodness. Neil, are you alright to wait there for a second? We've just got a break for the weather, but I've got a couple of more things. I'm fascinated by this story and, and to how you've just gone from where you were to what you've been up to. Are you alright to wait for a second? Yes, yeah, certainly, no problem. Excellent. Neil McIntosh, we'll be back with him in a moment. Alex is at the Weather Centre. Alex, I've changed my mind now. It's not miserable. It's just not great.
Well, it depends where you are. It really does. The well, first thing to mention is that yellow weather warning that we've got in for ice this morning. Where there are untreated surfaces, you could see some icy patches, so do take extra care on the roads. As we go through today, we do have some bright spells this morning, so it's not all bad. That cloud will increase over the course of the day, though. Later on, we'll see some showers, which could be wintry at times, working their way eastwards. Highs of around 7 degrees Celsius, but it will be feeling very chilly today. As we go towards tonight, those showers will continue to move eastwards, and there'll be some drier spells at times as well. Lows of around 1 degree Celsius, so there may be a little bit of frost in places and the risk of some icy patches on the roads as well. It'll be a cloudy start on Thursday with showers again, which could be wintry, clearing over the course of the morning. Breezy as well tomorrow morning, with drier and brighter spells expected in the afternoon. Highs of around 6 degrees Celsius. Low pressure is still in charge of our weather, so expect some breezy conditions as well, quite chilly at times. But as we head towards the weekend, some drier and finer weather. Excellent. Uh, Alex at the Weather Centre, thanks very much there. Um, we're back with Neil McIntosh, uh, Stafford photographer. So, Neil, you basically got this second-hand camera, start to, uh, started taking snaps, mm -hmm. you're in national newspapers, and you've got your <laughs> own calendar. <now. laughs> I mean, literally... 12 months on, how did that all come about? Um, if I tell you the truth, it's not even been 12 months, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> it, it's just it's just snowballed beyond all, all comprehension. Um, how it happened was I, I used to put photos up, and I still do, on my Facebook page. And obviously you get the, you know, your, your friends putting the, the likes on there, and they all make very nice comments, etc., etc., which is, is very gratifying. Um, but what I decided to do one day was I, I thought I'd send some photos off to the Staffordshire Wildlife Trust to a guy called John Owen there. And he was very, very pleased with some of the shots that I sent and wanted to share them on the Twitter account that they've got, which he duly did. Um, and, and two things happened from this. Well, the, the first one, if I step back to the, the Facebook page, about the back end of November, I put 12 shots up to signify my favourite 12 shots for, of the year, one for yeah. each month. And a couple of people said, well, why don't you do a calendar from it? And I was umming and ahhing as to whether I should because I just wasn't sure of the quality of the, of the photos. And they were saying, no, go on, go on. Next thing I know, I've had orders from people that I work with, people that are friends that I've known for years down in Essex that I still keep in contact with through Facebook. And I've ended up selling 45 calendars and two prints so far. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, with the Staffs Wildlife Trust, what happened was... That, um, John got a phone, I'd sent a photo of a stag in one morning and John got a phone call from a guy called Carl Jackson, the, uh, the Express and Star in, I presume it's Wolverhampton offices, yeah. saying that they wanted to use the shot and would I mind? And I said, well, no, get Carl to give me a ring. So about five minutes afterwards, I got a phone call from Carl saying, you know, listen, we really like this shot. We want to use it on the front page. Can you tell me a little bit about it? So gave him the full story of the calendars, etc., etc. And he said, right, well, there's two things we want to do then. He said, the first is we want to put your photo on the front page page of the Expression Star, which was quite something. And then, yeah, and then the second thing, he says, and I want to come, get somebody to come down, take some photos of you with your calendar and your camera, and do an article on you yourself in the paper. <laughs> so that went in about three or four days later. Then from that is where... Um, you guys picked up on the story through mm. the expression star of what had been happening. But on top of that, something else has happened fairly recently. Um, the beginning of September last year, I'd sent off three photos to the Mail on Sunday for a competition they were running for wildlife categories of mammals, insects, etc., etc. Got an email the same day as I got an email from, um, from BBC Stoke saying that whilst I hadn't actually won one of the prizes, what they wanted to do was publish one of my dear photos photos because they were so impressed with them it was an almost ran it was an almost winner so they're publishing that along with the names and the the details of the winners next month wow yeah that's great is, is there a, is the scope to have this as a career as a career, I don't know. Um, I look at the quality of my work and I still think that there's, there's a long way I could go. I, I get some lucky shots. I think I'm one of these guys who, who ha does it more by luck than judgment. I'm in the right place at the right time. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to roll with it as far, as far as it goes. As far as a career goes, I 
don't see it, but you never know. Um, certainly, I'd like to take it a little bit further. You know, I mean, if I can sell yeah. some more calendars and more prints, etc., etc., then I will quite happily do it. Where can we look at your photos if you want to see the work you've been doing, Neil? Right, if you look on Facebook, I'll have to spell the first word for you. It's Argaski Mac, and the first word is A R G A Z K I. And that is Basque for photos. And the second word is Mac, M-A-C, from my surname. So it's Argaski Mac. All oh, um, right, yeah, I found that. Yeah, and there's about four or five folders there um, which are categorised as insects, animals, deer, etc., etc. And within those are the photos that, uh, that I consider to be the, the best ones that I've had so far. Excellent. Neil, pleasure to speak to you. Thank fascinating, you. fascinating to hear from you. And, uh, well, well, we'll definitely... I've already checked and liked, well, so... Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Neil. Neil McIntosh, Stafford photographer. Worth uh, checking it there. We've got the name. Um, if you missed it and didn't get the spelling on Facebook, uh, we've got it here, and you can have a look.